Upon further reflection, I am more convinced that the Kevin McCarthy lie is a Kevin McCarthy lie. So Gene Kugar, he keeps on resting that if you were to put pressure, okay, so here's what I've got. Ryan Graham is going to explain, he says that you have to get an outright majority. If you don't get an outright majority, then there's no speaker. Well, they needed 218 if everybody showed up. Not everybody showed up, so they needed 213. They're going to get 216 to 209. Nancy gets a majority, and Nancy becomes speaker. If Nancy was deprived of a majority, if Nancy was deprived of the 213 that she needed, then it wouldn't go to Kevin McCarthy. There would be no speaker. According to Ryan Grimm, it gets kicked back to the caucus, and lots of people can run then. Anybody and everybody can run. And then when lots of people can run, one person will emerge. And then they got to go back and win the House. So according to Ryan Grimm, the repeat roll call doesn't happen immediately. It gets kicked back to the caucus. The caucus figures it out. They figure out their one candidate. Then they put their one candidate back up against the Republican. And then they got to win the majority. And then I assume if they don't get the majority, then the process repeats. Jimmy Dore is going to read the rules. You have the Congressional Research Service. The roll call is re repeated. That's what it says. So if there's no outright majority, I guess, of the present members, because if you're not president, so roll call is repeated. And then there's no restrictions on who can run on subsequent ballots. So Nancy loses. Then roll call is repeated. Now anybody can run. Now I would assume this is what Jink is talking about. The roll call just gets repeated immediately. Well, you don't want to do that. That's how you lose, you know, the speakership. You have to stop what you're doing, go back to the caucus, find the candidate that you think can get the majority. Because if they can't get the majority, then you have to pick somebody else. So the only thing you needed to do was deprive. Nancy Pelosi of an outright majority, deprive her of an outright majority, then there would have been no speaker. It wouldn't have gone to Kevin McCarthy. That's according to Ryan Grimm. David Sorotter says that another Democratic candidate can run. So Ryan Grimm says Jimmy Dore is right. David Sorotter says Jimmy Dore is right. And you know, here's you know Anna Kasparian just carrying on with her... Uh, sense that's going on. And the thing that has infuriated me the most, and I'm saying it, it, it has infuriated me, is that people who know us, people who know our intentions, people who have worked closely with us in the past are sitting there and listening to that lunatic and allowing and enabling that lunatic to make all sorts of ridiculous smears against good people who have been working hard, right? I have a huge problem with that. And they keep talking about it as if, like, oh, Jimmy Dore's mean, so I don't want Medicare for all. No, no, no. I can be mean, too. This isn't about Jimmy Dore being mean, okay? He could be as mean as he wants to be. What this is about, though, is the people surrounding him enabling him when he puts out ridiculous conspiracy theories, like calling me someone who's being funded by NATO because I interviewed Madeleine Albright once. So a uh, direct question to both Katie Halper and Brianna uh, Joy Gray. Do you guys think that I'm paid by NATO? And if you don't, why don't you say something? Do you think that uh, Sam Cedar is just a corporate shill? And if you don't think he is, then why don't you say so? I just think that this effort has been so destructive, so toxic, and so disgusting. And don't tell me not to focus on Jimmy Dore when they've decided to put Jimmy Dore front and center in this entire thing. So there you have it. Anna Kasparian is still losing her shit on Jacobin, which I don't... How are we getting Medicare for all? How does this get... Uh, they won, right? I mean, the force to vote was an utter and total disaster. It was a total failure. Like, it was a just... We got the PAYGO rules changed. We changed the narrative. We were all excited. We all like, each, uh, like ourselves, and we like each other. So that's, you know, all good developments. But ultimately, Nancy Pelosi is still the damn speaker. But progressives didn't even mount the serious challenge. It didn't look like there was anybody that was going to run. And they, uh, you know, there didn't even seem to be much talked of even withholding their votes. So, yeah, the five Democrats did, you know, vote for someone else or hold their votes back. But none of those squad, none of the progressives did. So...
All the progressives fell in line their very first vote. All those progressives can now be primary because remember when you went to Congress and the first thing you did was vote for a hundred and forty millionaire? Hundred and forty million dollars! Jesus Christ! So what, uh, what are we talking about here? So yeah, this is about another clip. Uh, you have eight hours, right? They're talking for eight hours and she's saying you're just enabling him. You're enabling him because do you think I'm getting paid by NATO? You did an, an interview with Madeleine Albright, and there was NATO money that was around the thing, and so if NATO had paid for the conference or for the room or for the microphone or for any goddamn thing, then they could say that because Jimmy Dore went to the same thing, and he wanted to crash the party, but she wanted to, you know, have a nice little chit-chat with Madeleine Albright. Max Blumenthal's correct. Anna should have asked, do you still think that a half a million... Iraqi children getting killed is worth it. Do you still think it was worth it? So it's also interesting how, you know, they're a bunch of hypocrites. So Anna Kasparian is, you know, just being shitty as fuck. And Natalie Scher and Nando Villa is just kind of looking off to the side like, oh, shit, we're going to get clipped in with this. And so Natalie Scher and Nando Villa would be uh, in enabling Anna Kasparian's, you know, crazy shittiness. Now, Aaron Mate, he had responded. He tweeted, this says 11 minutes ago, it's 1043 Pacific time, January 3rd, 2021, Sunday. Still, I guess, you know, force the vote day. Aaron Mate responds to Anna Kasparian saying, Anna, you gave a friendly interview to Madeleine Albright and promoted NATO at a conference sponsored by NATO governments and arms makers promoted NATO at a conference sponsored by NATO governments and arms makers. Whether you were paid or not, in my opinion, it's indefensible. Whether you were paid or not, it's certainly fair game. Fallen smears that Jimmy takes Assad money and denies atrocities. Yeah, there was a bunch of fucking shit. God, uh, Steve Bannon. Yeah, now apparently Jimmy Dore takes Steve Bannon money. That's the new Nomiki Const smear. They smear and pretend they're not smearing, and then they get smeared, and then they're like, wait, well, why'd you do that to me? That's not nice. So it said, gave an interview to Madeleine Albright and promoted NATO at a conference sponsored by NATO governments and arms makers. I don't know if that has anything to do with NATO. NATO is not a terrible organization. I mean, the NATO, NATO invasion of Libya that was awful, but NATO is there to protect the European nations from the, supposed to be a ball work for the, you know, Russian aggression. So, let's listen to this one more time. What, what are you saying, Anna? Let me, let's just make sure we got what she's saying. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, mischaracterize. What's going on, and the thing that has infuriated me the most, and I'm saying it, it, it has infuriated me, is that people who know us, people who know our intentions, people who have worked closely with us in the past are sitting there and listening to that lunatic and allowing and enabling that lunatic to make... That lunatic, which is an ad hominem attack, and then I mean, listen to her. She's going on and on about how he's a piece of shit and is being enabled. And here you have Nando Villa just looking lost and crazed and Natalie sure like, oh boy. So Anna's got her two enablers. I already mentioned that. I know. I know. They make all sorts of ridiculous smears against good people who have been working hard, right? I have a huge problem with that. And they keep talking about it as if, like, oh, Jimmy Dore's mean, so I don't want Medicare for all. No, no, no. I can be mean, too. This isn't about Jimmy Dore being mean, okay? He could be as mean as he wants to be. What this is about, though, is the people surrounding him enabling him when he puts out ridiculous conspiracy theories, like calling me someone who's being funded by NATO because I interviewed Madeline. All right, so that is just, uh, this, that's just nasty. That is just so nasty. So she's getting all crazy. I feel like she's just trying to divide and conquer. She's trying to sow division. She says that Jimmy got mad. Okay, so this is about, she got, okay, so eight hours, there's like eight people in the Zoom, and then Jimmy said fuck off to somebody, and then apparently a female, there was a female that was around that might have heard it or something. It's a Zoom call. It's like eight hours. They're like in hour six, right? So, okay. 
And Jimmy said, fuck off. And then now she's saying, I don't give a shit about Jimmy. So what, why is that? Like, Jimmy could say whatever he wants. And then she's trying to say that it's about the people around Jimmy who's allowed him to say these things. That's not pushing back. There's a lot of people that actually, I think Brianna Joy Gray has been very careful with how she speaks. And uh, who is the other person that she met? Katie Halper. And, um, and so, yeah, I feel like she's just trying to sow division. When it comes to that argument, Justin Jackson had said that, Jimmy is angry, of course he is, and ultimately, if none of the people on the call were mad about it, then why is she, you know, getting her, um, you know, her, uh, I don't know, bunny in a zoo, why is she getting her bunny in a zoo, you know, do I have anything else here, do I have anything else to say, is there anything, Aaron Mate's got a Twitter, I've never objected to criticizing Jimmy's rhetoric and hope force the vote could be debated on the merits, but Jimmy's detractors have tried to cancel him over his purported stances on other issues. At minimum, then, his detractor stances on other issues are fair game as well. Exactly. Tulsi, Jimmy, you know, Jill Stein, Tulsi, what the fuck, what are y'all talking, what is this? What are y'all talking about? Let us know, uh, let's note union buster Gene Ugar took $20 million from Clinton donors and smeared Julian Assange was caught repeatedly lying about forced voting now is not the time for Medicare for all. Well, he, now he called me a purist because I'm fighting for Medicare for all, and he's not. Hashtag fraud squad. <laughs> oh, man, good times. Fraud squad. Free of sons. Peace.